so it's a dark and stormy night. And I'm doing one of my little walks. Um, oh, I'm gonna get hit by a car. It's not late enough, apparently. Um, so, uh, I've gotta wait for this car to go by. It's, it's sloppy out, so they make a lot. Oh, they're not going by. Okay. I don't have any cats. None of them were nutty enough to come. Another bloody car. Oh, this one's going fast. I'm probably going to get sprayed. Buddy, I need to get that checked. Um. So. Clearly. The storm has started to dissipate. Everybody under the sun has decided to leave all at once. And none of them have mufflers. <laughs> um, I should restart this, but it's freaking hilarious. Uh, <laughs> so, here's the update on my insane life. Um, yesterday I spent 14 hours in the ER with my father. Um, because he got really sick on Friday and um, uh, he really had a bad time of it, let's put it that way. Uh, and he wasn't answering the phone yesterday morning. So I went in to see him and uh, it was sort of a planned attack. And he does hate me for this. That I would get him into an ER and try to get some treatment for him. Um, because, I mean, it could be because he was sick. But clearly his dementia is getting worse. I'm sure you can hear that. So fine. So, um... I thought that he needed to be, I thought he was dehydrated, he needed some liquids, some fluids. I was right about that. Um, apparently he was just, well, he actually was starting to have kidney failure. Okay, I've got to wait until we get past this bracket. slick out here because it's freezing rain on top of packed snow. It's fun. Um, anyway, so I had a really good excuse to get him into the ER where they were like bemused by his answers to all the questions like who is the president? Because he couldn't remember his name so he just described him as best he could. <laughs> um, couldn't give them again he kept saying that it was fall and October and stuff like that um, I mean it sounds like I'm making fun of it but it, it it gets to the point where it's almost like witty so he was admitted he's in the hospital indefinitely for dementia um, his kidneys have rebounded he was definitely dehydrated. He was really sick. I mean, he should have been in, forget about this dementia stuff, he should have been treated. Anyway, uh, his blood pressure was 110 over 42 when I brought him in. That's really bad in case you've got some old folks or yourself. Um, I mean, I've just been through this. My mother's death was six weeks ago tomorrow. And now my father. Jesus Christ is never been. Uh, it's never going to end. But, well, I mean, 
he's still trying. He still thinks that he has got it together. He has no idea how bad it is. Um, so they're asking him where he is. <laughs> and he thinks he's in a hotel. <laughs> and he knows he's up because he's on one of the higher floors. So, okay. I keep getting asked where I live. I think it's kind of creepy. I don't really want people to know, but I live in a big place and y'all have seen the license plates, I'm sure. <laughs> and if you don't know where I live, then it won't be so witty and hilarious. Um, uh, we live in Maine and he knows he's up. So he says he's in Canada. Because if you look at a map, Canada is up from Maine. It's like, way to nut this out. But I mean, he's been working on it for a long time, trying to figure out how to pass as being slightly with it, <laughs> when he's clearly not. Um, Hospital's very concerned. They don't want him living by himself anymore. They think he's a danger to himself and probably other people because he has an apartment and he has access to a stove. And he's a lot of good memory uh, for older things like 20, 30 years ago. He's got a great memory, but he has a very bad short-term memory. So if he started to cook something and forgot about it, he could burn the place down. Plus, you know, he was wandering around and lost and didn't know where his apartment was, so he was down in the lobby getting sick on Friday. So he's probably going to be asked to leave anyway. So it is frustrating. Um, my father is kind of like a cat. <laughs> I had a cat that was a terrible, horrible bitch. I mean, a terrible, horrible bitch. She used to lie and wait under the couch, you know, and this was in, this was the old days. They had like this skirt around the end of the couch, so it would look like it would go all the way to the ground. It wasn't in these raised things on feet that you could see under the couch. So she'd be under the couch sitting there waiting for somebody to sit down and she'd wait for somebody with bare feet. She wouldn't bother with people wearing shoes bare feet to attack their heels with all her claws from under the couch. She was wicked. And then she got old and forgot that she was a bitch and that she hated people. And she was the sweetest little thing. And in a way, that's the way my father is too. Um, he's docile and compliant and does whatever anybody asks until, because he's not consistent in this, it comes and goes, sounds like this is another car coming home, uh, until he remembers who he is. And then he turns and he is abusive again and making threats. I mean, there's nothing he can do. Nothing at all. Yeah, we got a car coming. Apparently he pulled his IV out and had a nifty little gross episode with bleeding. Come on, Paul. Oh God, it's a plow. Okay, I'm going back because I'm not gonna get sprayed by this plow. <laughs> I go on this side. <laughs> oh my god, that would have been bad. This is going to be bad. I would have been 100% coated head to foot in slush. I'm glad I kept looking back. <laughs> and I think it means it's time to go back. Especially because it is getting slippery out here. And... That would be really interesting if I went blind. 
actually because it's hilly between here and my house. There's a decent chance I'm not gonna make Oh another plow. Cool. That looks like a house plow though. Um there's a decent chance I'm not gonna make it up and down this place. <sighs> anyway, I thought that was I guess and do you see how fast they go? Like, who cares if they speed up? Who cares if they hit a nice spot and go flying and smash into people? <laughs> Plows are terrible. <laughs> but it is a good quarter inch of slush that I'm walking on right now. This is fun. This was probably not smart. Um, also, because I'm giving out personal information that I really shouldn't. Today is my birthday. Isn't this great? <laughs> um, it's not great. <laughs> but it is life. So that's life as an avoidant person. I think it's kind of lucky that um, my father's side of the family are big textures as opposed to pick up the phone and call. Thank you, God. I hate texting even more than I hate phone calls, but I really hate being stuck on the phone for hours. And, um, they're doing some kind of testing with my father tomorrow because that's Monday and they have more people on staff to be able to help him out. I don't know. So, I did get six weeks off after my mother died. Sort of. Maybe a month off. Because I had to clean out her apartment, deal with all the relatives, blah, 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 blah. Then they completely disappeared. Because that's what they do. That's what everybody does. It's like traditional first couple weeks people are there and then they're gone and it was really insulting it was it was insulting there's no other way of describing it for this I'm getting a lot a lot of judgment especially from the hospital they're like well how come he doesn't have any clothes how come he doesn't have pajamas how come I'm like um because I brought him in to the ER Thinking he was dehydrated at 9 o'clock in the morning, I figured you'd give him a bag of fluids and he'd be home by 12. I didn't know you were going to put him in the hospital indefinitely. So I didn't bring clothes. Obviously. <laughs> Duh. But the hospital is just very, very much like, well, how come you're not? Like, well, because. And then today, actually, I got a day off. It was kind of a miracle. I was like, oh God, this nasty snowstorm. Oh no. Is that the plow coming back? Might be the plow coming back. Um, this is not what you want to be driving around in. So, I was not looking forward to having to, you know, I mean, obviously they just assume I would drive and get him and take him home. Tomorrow. They thought he was going home tomorrow. They thought that he was only going to be in for um, his kidney issue. And then it turns out that, you know, maybe 50% of what he says has any um, uh, cohesion whatsoever. He's completely incoherent. So they're like, yeah, we can't. We can't let him go home. Well, he got insane this for years. <laughs> I wonder where that. Oh, they're up there. Are the cars? I, oh, goodness. Are we under a tree or is it really starting to rain again? I don't know. This is me complaining. That's all I do is complain. Anyway, so I haven't been calling the hospital. Well, there's two of them. There's one over there and one over there. Right. Um, so I guess i got to shut up for about a minute.
All right, so for all that whining, what the hell does this have to do with avoiding personality disorder? Um, well, I have told people, I'm sure, about my fabulous pendulum theory and about how if you get swung to one side, you will get swung to the other as hard as you possibly can. And that sometimes, in the process of this swinging, you know, eventually, if you swing hard enough on this thing, the fulcrum will shift. And I think that's what's happened. Because either that or I'm just so burnt, I don't know. I just, I don't, it's awful. I don't care. I mean, it could be that, you know, my father is incoherent and he's horrible and he's telling me that he hates me for bringing him to the hospital and he is never going to do anything for me again and he's never going to talk to me again, sort of. I mean, he, he can't even articulate it like that, but he's making it plain that he's not happy with me. That he's so incoherent that maybe it's not as bad as my mother picking up the phone as soon as I'm around the corner to be sure that I can hear while she tells everybody that she can about how awful I'm being and I'm actually hearing her reporting to other people how awful I am. Maybe that's the difference that I'm not hearing that because my father's honor is mine and he can't articulate it. Um, maybe. I don't know. But maybe I've gotten used to it. Maybe my tolerances have gotten built up. Maybe it's because this is only the second day of it. I mean, I was dead exhausted yesterday. Just from sitting in freaking hospital. Because there's people, and there's nurses, and there's my father. Asking 900 times why he was there and he couldn't remember. I don't know. Um... I don't know. But, you know, my mother, it was years and years and years and years and years of, of every week going to doctor's appointments. I, I think I've said this too, that after my mother died, my gas bill for the car dropped from $25 a week to $10 a week because I wasn't driving her ass everywhere and doing all her errands. Now, of course, my father's brothers and sisters are like, yeah, now you're going to do that for your father, right? And I'm like, no, not. Absolutely not. I can't do it again. And my grandmother lived, she was about this condition when they started treating her. And she lived for another 20 years before she died of Alzheimer's. And there is no way. Hey, I got up that hill. That was the hill I thought that was going to be too slippery to walk up. <laughs> Anyway, um, but yeah, you get used to it when it's the same thing over and over again. You get used to it. Either the same thing or there's that plow, thank God didn't come this way. Or, um, if different location and different people all the time. Different kind of stress, but that seems to be easier on somebody that's avoiding too. Same thing. Um, so I guess that's all there is to say. Just, you know, I mean, who knows what's going on with my father? Maybe I'm going to bang out both my parents, one right after the other. That would really suck. Uh, because, like, I see the lawyer this week to try to figure out my mother's estate. Because my sister is still disappeared. And it's nearly impossible when you don't have a will and you don't have an executor and you don't have all of the parties participating to, you know, 
do everything you need to get done. Um, oh, the storm is coming back or something. I don't know. So, uh, it's a really bad situation. And I see the lawyer and try to sort that out on Tuesday. So, who knows? I mean, if I had to do both of them at once, oh my god, both of their estates, my father is so secretive, he wouldn't even tell me, he doesn't want me to know his brother's phone number because he doesn't want us talking to each other because he's freaking weird, he's always been like that. Um, I don't know. But yeah, it doesn't rain, it pours. As soon as my mother sort of stops being a burden on me, which is awful to say, but it's the truth. As soon as she stopped like dragging me down into the gutter, now my father. But he might actually get treatment. Uh, they also said that uh, what he's got from their test, there is no going back. This is not reversible and it's not stoppable. It's going to continue at its own pace or something you can do. So just prepare to get worse and worse and worse. And it's like, oh. <laughs> I can't be his caretaker. I won't be his caretaker. Uh, this weather is really disgusting. I bet that if you could see anything, it would be a big blurry mess. Because I'm sure that this camera is completely coated in frozen slop at this point. So we need to stop it. But that's what's going on right now. <laughs> on the avoidant front. <laughs> Uh, yeah, just have to plow through, and maybe one of these days, things will get better, maybe, <sighs> maybe, probably not, bye.